<laughs> yeah, that, that's going to make the video cut. <laughs> Today's video, sponsored by friends, because I didn't have enough projects. So John talked a few into one. So, I'm going to be making a sled out of this wagon. It's a radio fire wagon from the 70s. And Turner had one, and he gave it to me. And Dan had some skis that I could have. And we've already taken off the mounts off of one. And then Mark gave us the metal. And our Patreon supporters that specifically chose to support John paid for all the nuts and bolts because you've got a few loose. <laughs> so we've taken apart one ski. So we can find all of the hidden screws and stuff inside of it. And now we're going to apply that knowledge from this onto this and take out all of these mounts and stuff. These mounts were luckily not glued on. It was screwed on. You got to give it a manly wallop. Oh. And you got to hold it turned while you hit it. There it goes, I saw that one turn. Will it go? There you go. <laughs> hey, good job, bud. Here we go. Looks about the right length. I think we might slide it slightly forward. Can you, can you grab both ends and like pick it so it's six inches up off of there so people can see? Yeah, so we need to build standoffs. It'll be a little bit shorter than what John has it right now. But I think that'll work out. I got a lot of figurines to do at this point, don't I? Yeah, this, this is why you hired me for this job, not because of my looks. <laughs> All right, does your first piece fit? Yes, this Vevor MiG-130 was a sponsor welder, and it was sent to me for free, but I thoroughly recommend these if you want a father-son beat it around and throw it around the garage welder. It's insanely capable and dials in really low. We'll even do sheet metal and quarter inch thick if you dial it all the way up through and take your time. So right now, I'm finishing up the legs to go to either side. Yes, I know that I need a triangulated piece, probably right in here. We're going to add that once we're sure that it fits onto the skis and we get it all tacked together. You're not a fan of the jury-rigged drill press, are you? I'm fine with it. Oh, you're fine with it now that you're on camera? Yeah. So, John would love for us to go and get a new drill press. Because, apparently, my return fix is janky to him. Can you see the dream? So, we designed the front end of this, so there's a million and one different things we can do for a handle. And we're going to attach a brace bar right here with leftover metal that we have. We it'll fit right here. We just need to chop the end off of it and then we're going to weld it in. And then it's going to be all attached. And then we bolt it. And then we're going to be done. Now, dead question. Do you remember what the type of bolts are that we're going to use? Whatever this is. Do you remember what they're called? Nope. Carriage bolts. We're going to use carriage bolts so that they have a round head going up through so it'll glide on top of them. Oh. Okay. That way you don't get stabbed at when you sit down in it also. <laughs> Although that might be fun. <laughs> hey! Hey, John! What? If anybody wants a mask as cool as yours, what do they got to do? In the description. Where's the description? Hello? Man, you and this YouTube promotion stuff. We're still working on it. <laughs> All right, get some holes drilled. All right.
What did you do? It's tight, it's everything. That's tech loading right now. To answer the question I get all the time of the little Hitbox 200 versus the Vevor 130, there's a reason this is $30 cheaper. It only has one dial. It is only good for fresh, mild steel. If you're doing anything that's got rust, anything that you've got to burn through a coating or anything like that, the Vevor does better. This is great. It's worth what you pay for it, but the Vevor at the end of the day is still a better unit if you can spend the extra 30 bucks. We've come to the conclusion that this is just one giant optical illusion because the skis have this little bit of a willy wobble in the center and we're trying to line up a straight edge. So after measuring it, debating, arguing for 15 minutes, we're just going to start drilling. Okay, you, I get the hint. You need some sort of steering bar handle thing. Luckily, your dad's a junkyard dog, and I got an idea for this. So, let's go find it. Okay, so, you need a handlebar. So, here's my idea. Over here, between these two trucks, there's a mower. Go ahead and grab that set of handlebars, and people will see why I got the mower for free. Just go up and down with them really good. Yeah, so it's a good thing I only wanted the engine. You can have the handlebars. At first, we like Dad's idea. At second thought, we have decided we want a single bar, but we're gonna take the lawnmower pusher thing, we're gonna slice it up. What we're gonna hope is that if we cut it right about here, that we can take this and flip it over to have it come from here, around, and then use this center piece welded right about here for a handle. Or at least that's the theory. It sounds like a lot more of me work. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Lawnmower push handle reinvention, take two. So we need to add a pivot to the front so that now that should be able to come up and around like that. What do you think, John? Should I weld that together and put a pivot in the front? Sure. Okay. John's at school, so I'm trying to honor his request that everything on this stays junkyard. So what we did was we took a lift bracket out of a Craftsman LT2000, we sliced it off, we drilled out the spot welds in it, so you can see it's drilled out there and there, and then we found a push-through pin that came off one of the dragsters. It's bent because I had the wheelie bar set incorrectly and it slammed into it. So this is perfect to use it on. Yes, it is very loose, but that is because John wanted this to be big enough that we could put a rope through it if we wanted to instead of using the pole handle. So now we're gonna break it all down. I'm gonna get it painted up for him and then reassemble. I just couldn't help myself. I didn't like these open caps on the end, and so while I was bottle feeding Jethro with one hand, I designed these up in CAD with the other and 3D printed them. I also thought that hand catches on the ends was a good idea, so those are glued in now. Well, when John gets home from school, we'll bolt it all together, that way he can tell me about his day, and then we can go take this thing for a test drive and see how it actually does. This right here is why we put the side grips on so that when you're hauling it around it holds it in your hand. All right, sun is setting. Let's see you go for this. All 
Ah, you broke a new track. Yeah, right now this has like ice chunks all over it. This is probably the worst to test this in. But, John, before my fingers freeze off in 12 degree weather, what do you think? Was it worth building? Other than some 3D printed parts and some Patreon bolts, it's all junkyard. What do you think of that? Nice. So what's your future plans for the wagon? What do you want to do with it next? So I would like to try to make the pan of it removable. Then I'd put on the different projects and stuff as the frame of it. So, so we like turn it into like a go-kart or like that. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to be a pansy and go inside because I'm cold and I have to film with my uh, fingers open to the elements. <laughs> so you enjoy yourself and have fun. Right. Yeah, that ice layer on top just sucks. It's okay. You did really good on building the thing. Love you, Butterwall.